Hi, everybody. It's Dr. John Heary. I'm uh, uh, coming to you today. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk about blood sugar today, and you know what's you know what's hiding um, you know behind uh, some of your blood sugar numbers. So you know, um, people who are diagnosed with type two diabetes, it's it's not like you just wake up one day and you become diabetic. You know, in fact, there's there's virtually no symptoms that you may experience in the early stages or in the pre-diabetes stage. But, you know, but then one day your annual blood tests come back and your doctor tells you that your glucose was too high and your hemoglobin A1C was over 6.4%. So, you know, what does that really mean? You know, where does that come from? You know, why weren't you warned? You know, and and, and now what, you know, what do I do? You know, all, all these questions may be going through your head at the time, but what you're about to find out is that there's hidden factors behind medications behind diets, the foods that we eat, uh, and the hormones that may be contributing, you know, to the rise of this, you know, the, of the diabetic epidemic. So diabetes, you know, it doesn't have to be a progressive disease and, you know, it can be controlled or even reversed with just a few changes to your lifestyle habits. Now, even, even when you think that you're exercising enough and eating the right foods, you may be you know misinformed or you know maybe just in the dark about the products that have been marketed to you uh, for weight control for diabetes etc. Um, and another thing you got to take a look at are your medications. You know are your medications you know to uh, are, are they to blame for your high blood sugar? Um, you know one common medication um, that you definitely need to take a look at are the statin drugs. Did you know that the you know the statins you know, they're known to raise glucose levels. You know, the statins, you know, they're a medication or group of medications that are used to lower cholesterol. But on the average, statins can increase fasting plasma glucose by seven points in non-diabetics. Now, in diabetics, the statics in the statins increase your glucose level by 39 points. So, you know, statins raise your risk of diabetes by increasing your insulin levels and blood sugar. And the way they do it is they, they block the liver's ability to convert the starches that you eat into cholesterol. Instead, the starches are they're going to be returned to the bloodstream, which is going to raise your sugars or your sugar levels in the blood. So statins can more than double your risk of developing diabetes. Studies show that individuals who used statin drugs longer than two years are more than three times as likely to get diabetes. You know, unfortunately, as of 2014, the American Diabetes Association calls for patients with diabetes to be put on a statin drug to lower the risk of heart disease. You know, your doctor, you know, may take into account other risk factors to determine, you know, which statin would be best for you based on your know, blood pressure, cholesterol, age, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if, you know, if you're not diabetic before going on a statin, how do you know if your diet's to blame? or if the medication could have been the contributing factor uh, to your elevated glucose levels. You know, there's many, um, there's many ways to reduce risk factors for heart disease, for diabetes, and even lowering cholesterol naturally just by changing a few things in your diet and also exercise. You know, one of the things you need to take a look at um, are, you know, what are in the drinks uh, that you're drinking, right? A simple way to cut out unneeded calories and sugar from the diet is to evaluate your beverage sources. You know, many research studies, you know, they've shown that sugary drinks, you know, from soda, uh, from soda, um, you know, fruit juice, sweetened tea, uh, specialty coffee drinks, right? They can all increase your risk of developing not just diabetes, but they cause weight gain, inflammation, tooth decay, and even cancer. Your know, research shows that adults who routinely consume at least one can of soda or other sugar sweetened beverages a day, they're 46% more likely to develop elevated blood sugar levels than people who rarely or never drink cola. You know, and it, it's not just soda that can be, you know, culprit to your daily sugar increase. You know, fruit juice can be just as bad. You know, for example, you know, the average 12 ounce soda contains roughly 35 to 45 grams of sugar. All right. Now, you know, the same amount of orange juice comes in at about 30 grams. You know, there is a study that was uh, that was done um, by uh, researchers um, from Sorbonne Paris uh, University. It showed that the consumption of uh, sugary soft drinks 
including 100% fruit juice, was significantly associated with the risk of overall cancer. Um, another thing we need to take a look, uh, look at, uh, are you consuming additives in your food and in your drinks? You know, studies have shown that you know, hyperglycemic, you know, high blood sugar effects of the common food add additives like MSG, aspartame, not only can they increase the risk of diabetes, but food additives and artificial sweeteners, you know, they've been linked to obesity, Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, autoimmune diseases, even cancer. Um, animal studies have also shown that uh, dietary MSG induces markers of insulin resistance, which is you know, a direct cause of type 2 diabetes. Aspartame, on the other hand, you know, that's been shown to stimulate the rapid release of insulin and leptin, which are hormones that tell the brain when you're satisfied. Uh, they regulate your metabolism and also your fat storage. Leptin is largely responsible for the accuracy of insulin signaling and whether or not you become insulin resistant. So when, you know, when you're reading uh, labels, try to avoid processed food and condiments, um, you know, with glutamate, glutamic acid, uh, gelatin, um, MSG, uh, also known as uh, monosodium glutamate, um, calcium ca uh, caseinate, um, textured protein. Um, also, uh, you want to avoid like a, a sodium caseinate. Um, you know, it, you got to be careful when something says natural flavorings as well, too. Um, you know, soy protein isolate, hydrolyzed protein. Um, those are all additives. And, you know, these these additives, they're, you know, that's just to name a few. You know, you, you may be more sensitive you know, to additives than you think. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're getting headaches, if you're getting muscle aches, swelling, um, or, you know, any uh, allergy type of symptoms after eating certain foods, you may want to read the other ingredient section of the nutrition label, you know, to see if there's any kind of additives in the product. Now, um, you know, another thing that we uh, uh, need to talk about also is I need, I want to make sure you guys understand, um, you know, what the glycemic load is. Okay, so different carbohydrates, they can affect your blood sugar in different ways. You know, the way that, uh, you know, food makes your blood sugar rise is dependent on what's called the glycemic index. So the glycemic index, it's based on a scale from zero to 100. The lower the number, the slower that the food makes your blood sugar go up. However, if the glycemic index it doesn't take into account the carbohydrates contained in the food. You know, therefore, you know, the glycemic index, you know, it's a calculation using or the, you know, the glycemic index of the food and the amount of the carbohydrates. So using the glycemic load can give you a better idea of the quality of the food. So again, the lower that number is, the better it is. You know, low glycemic load diet, it's not as restrictive um, as you may think. You know, researching uh, you know lists of of low uh, low glycemic food uh, load foods, you know it's available on you know, on the on the web. You can you know find all kinds of low glycemic foods. Here here are some vegetables and fruits to consider with you know the lowest carbohydrate content. Um, you know asparagus uh, is good. Avocado, uh, broccoli, carrots. You know Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower. Um, which you can use to make your know, cauliflower rice, uh, you know, mashed potatoes with cauliflower, um, celery, cucumber, uh, kale, lettuce, uh, mushrooms, onions, any kind of peppers, you know, tomatoes, um, cantaloupe, strawberries, um, watermelon. You know, those are all, um, you know, low glycemic foods. Um, now, another thing we need to take a look at as is whether or not you're getting um, the right type of testing done. You know, and the best way to know you know, where you're at is to monitor your blood tests. You know, you can test your glucose every day, but that value will fluctuate. So you definitely want to also see where hemoglobin A1C is as well. Um, and if you know any trends in the numbers, if, they're, if they keep on going up, you're going to need to take a closer look at your lifestyle choices. Uh, you know, significant improvements can be made and seen in just a few weeks. Um, it's also advisable that you, uh, that you do a urinalysis every six months if you're over the age of 30. Um, and you really should get a comprehensive blood test or a, a comprehensive nutritional blood test. It, it should be done initially and repeated at least once a year or more, depending on what type of metabolic factors um, you have going on, you know, whether the kidneys are infected, uh, uh, affected, liver, digestion. Um, 
but you, you need to make sure that you know, we're, you're improving, that you're optimizing your health. You know, deficiencies, they can be corrected easily, you know, with proper supplementation, you know, diabetics, um, you know, things that need to take a look at are vitamin C, fish oil, magnesium, vitamin E, you know, other nutrients to consider, you know, could be, you know, niacin, vanadium, chromium, picolinate, or, you know, what, depending on what's indicated on your comprehensive testing, all right, you don't want to guess at it, you want to know exactly what you need. Um, and same thing with, you know, the dosages of vitamins and minerals. They're going to depend, you know, on the individual, you know, and that can change over time, depending on the improvements that are, you know, seen with the retesting of your blood work. So again, you want to stop guessing at what's causing your numbers to go up. You want to get a precise plan that's tailored for exactly what you need. Well, um, you know, I hope that was helpful. I hope that gives you some good information. Um, and uh, if, you know, if you need help in any way, uh, please reach out. Other than that, you guys have a, a great day and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay.